So let me give you a brief um, overview of SN1 reactions and how the solvent plays a role in terms of the solvent effects um, for SN1. And there is a previous video in my YouTube folder that talks about SN2 and solvent effects. Basically, we're going to break salt. We're going to break the solvents down. First of all, we have to use a polar solvent because in an SN1 reaction, we're going to make a carbocation. We're going to react this with negatively charged nucleophiles. The leaving group will most likely have a negative charge, and so we need a polar solvent. There are two types. There are hydroxylic solvents, which are called protic solvents and there are non-hydroxylic solvents which are called aprotic and the book uses the protic aprotic term I'm gonna again use um, hydroxylic and non-hydroxylic to go with that so the protic solvents are things with OH groups on it that's why they can also be called hydroxylic um, things like water and alcohols will be our examples of protic or hydroxylic solvents. Non-hydroxylic solvents or aprotic solvents can be things like acetone that we use in the lab. It's polar, but there's no OH groups in it. Um, we can also use CH3, C triple bond N, which is called acetonitrile or acetonitrile. We can use a CH3 attached to an S double bond O. That is called dimethyl sulfoxide, which is abbreviated DMSO. And the book likes to use dimethylformamide a lot, which is C, which is an aldehyde. Um, actually, have the aldehyde on one side and amide on the other with two methyl groups attached to nitrogen. This is dimethyl formamide, which is also abbreviated DMF. So these are our types of solvents that we use for um, SN1 and SN2 reactions. Now, if we're going to determine what the solvent effect is going to be, Basically, just like in the case of SN2, the hydroxylic solvents or the protic solvents are the solvents that we're going to focus on because their effects are either going to speed up or slow down the reaction. And the protic or in the aprotic solvents, you can just kind of think of as not having those effects. So in this case, we take an alkyl halide. And the rate determining step is to break the carbon halogen bond, form a carbocation, and the leaving group, in this case, the halogen anion. Now, in this case, it is the hydroxylic or protic solvents cause this reaction to go faster. So protic or hydroxylic solvents will increase the rate of this rate determining step of the reaction. How do they do that? They do that by solvating the C plus and the either and the and in this case not the nucleophile but the leaving group. They solvate those better. So if you have a carbocation, if you think about solvating that with the delta minus oxygen of a of a protic or hydroxylic solvent that's going to form a fairly strong interaction and when you have a number of those water molecules or alcohol molecules then you're going to have um, a pretty decent solvation the same thing can be said of the x minus it could be solvated by the hydrogen that is delta positive of the water or the alcohol. So a polar or hydroxylic solvent will solvate the carbocation and the leaving group better. What does that do? 
that makes the products more stable because they're better solvated. What did we learn about acid-base equilibrium recently? What we said was that the more stable you can make the products, the more the equilibrium will get pushed. But in this case, what happens is the more stable we can make the products, the faster the reaction will occur because the products will be more stable. And so in this case, the reason that SN1 reactions, the rates of an SN1 reaction are increased by hydroxylic or protic solvents is because they solvate the products of the rate determining step better, making that reaction occur faster. What about the aprotic solvents? Um, they're fine in terms of solvating, but they don't solvate nearly as well as the hydroxylic ones. So reactions will go faster in hydroxylic solvents, or they will go in faster in reactions that contain a higher percentage of hydroxylic solvents or a higher percentage of water or alcohol. And so that's how the solvent plays a role in SN1. It solvates the cat carbocation and the leaving group ion better, stabilizing the products, causing the reaction to go faster. So if you look at this problem, it asks you which reaction would go to have the fastest rate. So all of these are acetone water mixtures. These are all tertiary butyl bromide, and in essence it's reacting with the water to do an SN1 mechanism. So looking at this, we would expect that the higher the percentage of water, which is both the nucleophile and the solvent in this case, but the percentage, the higher the percentage of water, the more the products of the rate determining step will be stabilized. In this case, the tertiary carbocation would be more stabilized by having the delta minus oxygen of the water solvating it. The bromine would be sol would be more uh, solvated by having the delta positive hydrogen of the water solvating it. The, the stronger the solvation, the more stable those products are, the faster the reaction will be. And since this is the rate determining step, that will be the faster the reaction will go. So in this case, the, the reaction that has the highest percentage of water of the hydroxylic solvent or protic solvent is the one that would go the fastest. So that's the role of hydroxylic or protic solvents. They speed up SN1. And if you go back and look at the video um, from before with SN2, they actually slowed down SN2 reactions because in that case the solvation of the nucleophile as it attacks the alkyl halide in that one-step mechanism causes the reaction to go slower.